the brigade that's on the Greenpeace ship right now, the Arctic Sunrise, is headed to Puerto Rico, and they are leaders from uh, just transition communities across the country, from California, from New York, um, joining our partners and members, Organización Boricua, on the ground to rebuild uh, Puerto Rico from a sustainable way to assure food sovereignty by helping to um, replant organic food and um, continue to amplify um, uh, the voices and communities on the ground that are um, highly impacted by the hurricanes, by the storms, by climate catastrophe and assure that the, the power that we're building is a strong power led by frontline communities. We are very happy to be part of the Climate Justice Alliance delegations as a member of Climate Justice Alliance and in conjunction with the many organizations here on the ground. I think that folks have a beautiful heart, uh, they have beautiful minds, and that there is a lot of resistance here in Puerto Rico. So we're shipping down supplies like um, solar batteries, solar chargers, uh, water purification system, agricultural tools, seeds, uh, fossil free transport like bikes with trailers, um, all kinds of things that can help shift to um, energy democracy, energy sustainability, and sustainable agriculture. For us it's not only about rebuilding, it's about leaving communities better prepared in the face of climate catastrophe. The Just Transition Alliance is an alliance between environmental justice organizations and networks and labor, primarily those that are in the oil, chemical and uh, other industrial union sectors. We are here in Puerto Rico because we have been working with people here in Puerto Rico over 20 years. We were involved in many, many uh, of the campaigns here in Puerto Rico that people have decided to, to ask us to come in. And it just seemed natural that we come in now with this gesture of solidarity. In addition to art being um, a, a tool for strategic organizing, um, artists have the ability to really provide healing spaces for communities um, that are really deeply in need of it right now in, in a moment like this. Um, and so I'm very interested in um, building with the artists out in Puerto Rico and finding out how I can support them as an artist at home and um, listening to their, you know, hearing taking direction from, from their messaging and uh, bringing that messaging home to amplify it on a larger stage um, and, and just working in solidarity with my people and just reconnecting on that very, very important level. I don't see a way to recover from the hurricane nor all the stuff that was happening before if we do not use food. I don't see it. I don't see how our economy is going to recover. I don't see how our ecosystems are going to recover. I don't see how our social or you know even political well-being is going to recover. Our health, and I think food is a powerful tool. I mean, I think food we all know nourishes us, can be responsible with the environment, can help lift up local economies, can help maintain culture. Um, is a, also like a political tool, right? I'm with Organización Boricua, the Agricultura Ecológica de Puerto Rico, which is uh, an organization 
that uh, works around agroecology and the struggle for, for food sovereignty. So in our organization, we have uh, farmers, peasants, um, uh, food sovereignty activists, uh, farm workers, and a lot of people that are also interested in educating about uh, healthy food, but also uh, we consider agroecology to be a social movement. So we organize a lot in different communities and different parts of the island and uh, with brigades. The first thing that everyone know that happened in the hurricane, it was that the hurricane had not started yet when the signal for communication stopped. So we basically were 24 hours living that nightmare without knowing what was happening. We could figure it out because of the noises, you know, the wind, the water. Uh, we knew that there was something huge. So I knew after the whole thing happened and when I saw for first time my farm and I saw the island, I say the only people really that can help us are our brother and sister from the diaspora. I came back from Puerto Rico a few days ago. Um, I've been doing some solidarity work for more than a month and a half. We specifically went on brigades uh, to support local agriculture. We are heavily invested in making sure that we coordinate a Puerto Rican diaspora response in New York City. And in a short amount of time, we've got over 30 organizations in New York City really collaborating uh, to make sure that we fight the debt, that we fight the Jones Act, that we fight La Junta, uh, and that we provide solidarity and financial support uh, to the front line of the crisis here in Puerto Rico. Yeah, we don't want that to happen again. We know that because of the changes in the climate, this could be more frequent, you see? Not necessarily it would be 90, or 100 year as had been happening uh, in the last centuries. Uh, but this, it could happen sooner. And this is actually a traumatic ex collective experience. When Maria hit, our member group, Organización on the, uh, Boricua on the ground, asked us to come together and build with them a vision for a just recovery that extended beyond Puerto Rico and really could help align a full frontline community assessment and plan for a just recovery. Um, communities that have been at the front lines of the fossil fuel fight have been saying this for a long time that there is a real urgency to deal with climate change. When Puerto Rico experienced the effects of Maria, it was clear that we had a one in a lifetime opportunity to unite communities together and have a vision for a just recovery that included things like food sovereignty, energy democracy, um, self-determination, and a real a justice approach and a people approach to building power. While we were here, the government decided to privatize the energy system. So what privatization means for people here in Puerto Rico is that the, what they pay for energy is going to go up because now a company from the United States will be making money on what's happening here in Puerto Rico. First is the privatization of electricity, then from there we see the privatization of water, then we see the privatization of schools and institutions. So what's the impact of that privatization? Uh, both on, on, on workers participating in the decision-making process uh, about their future and their, and their destiny, but at the same time, then the elimination of trade unions. Right to work in the United States, um, the national campaign around right to work, um, and how uh, that's getting played out in many of our communities. We need to be able to build the relationships between workers, uh, between farmers, uh, those in the countryside and so on, and then the grassroots organizations or the NGOs here. We've met with presidents of unions from throughout the island that represent hundreds of thousands of people. And one of the things that they tell us is that ultimately privatization is going to hurt the workers, it's going to hurt communities, and it's going to hurt the environment. So we have to take this back to the United States and help in some way get this message out that privatization is not the way to go. Any of the issues in Puerto Rico need to be driven and we're very well aware of that. 
uh, driven by uh, what we call the bottom-up process. Um, and that, uh, that to us means uh, that the issues and the solutions uh, to bring about after the recent hurricane, um, that that needs to be driven by folks in Puerto Rico and not driven by organizations um, in the United States. The Just Transition Alliance was formed with the relationship with unions and environmental justice communities in the United States. So that's what our primary focus was here too, is to bring unions to the table, to have those dialogues with the communities, to help out in whichever way they can. And ultimately what we've seen here in Puerto Rico is that what affects people on the job affects people in the community. And we see that. And one of the pieces that we really want to make sure people understand is that there can't be an environmental justice movement. There can't be a just transition without those workers that are in harm's way as well. We are seeing a mass exodus also of people here from the island of Puerto Rico. And the same thing happened in Katrina. So now what we want to go back and do is we want to bring some of the community folk from New Orleans, from Louisiana here to, so that they can talk with the people here in Puerto Rico so that they can ex tell them exactly how the disaster capitalists have ruined a lot of the livelihoods back in Louisiana. Our brothers in Puerto Rico had gone through so many um, struggles, especially with Maria Hurricane. And I wanted to, it's an honor and a privilege to be here to show solidarity, to understand, you know, that they're not by themselves, that no matter the distance, we're here with them and we stand with them in solidarity. If there's anything we can do, we're going to stand by, by them, by their side. We're going to be actually showing solidarity like we did right now in any way that we can help. I mean, physically, I mean, moving things, uh, mobilizing, uh, educating, uh, and just being here, you know, showing solidarity, knowing that their injury, their struggle is our struggle as well. We're also going to be meeting with unions, and that's uh, to show solidarity and to try and get them all together, to work together to benefit the union members, the working class, and the community as well. We represent the oil refinery workers, the paper workers, the mattress workers, the car wash workers. We, were, we represent uh, 3,000 members, and there are different sectors, and doesn't matter how small, how big, their struggle is important to our union. Llevamos hace alrededor de 18 años trabajando con el concepto de agroecología. Comenzamos trabajando con agricultura orgánica y miramos un poco más allá y encontramos entonces el concepto de agroecología que nos enseña o que nos lleva a pensar que podemos producir alimentos sanos en armonía con el ambiente. Nosotros sostenemos aquí en el proyecto que se llama Agricultura en Armonía con el Ambiente que los niños deben tener eso como un derecho fundamental humano. Saber cómo producir alimentos sanos, conocer cada una y cada cual de todas las destrezas de producir alimentos sanos. Entonces en este momento tenemos varias organizaciones que estamos muy, muy, muy agradecidos de que estén aquí. Tenemos la organización Boricua, nacida aquí en las montañas de Orocovi, en Puerto Rico, pero también tenemos la, la Vía Campesina, que es una organización de nivel internacional en Latinoamérica, eh, y tenemos varias otras organizaciones. Eh, la Diáspora está con nosotros aquí, representada eh, con personas de Nueva York, puertorriqueños, que viven en Nueva York, eh, entre otras organizaciones más. Eh, personas que trabajan con el cambio climático, eh, personas que trabajan con obreros agrícolas y están aquí dándonos la mano. Y no lloramos después de María por todo lo que había hecho María, pero sí lloramos de la emoción de ver esa solidaridad. Eso sí nos ha hecho llorar, de alegría, de ver la solidaridad.
the Climate Justice Alliance is uh, one of, of, the, of the organizations that we are part of as well, like La Via Campesina. And, and we believe that it's very important that we demonstrate this, this as, a, as an action, a, a collective action. It's a, a lot of symbolism to come to Puerto Rico because I'm, I'm Mexican, I myself as well. And being Mexican, we have suffered a lot in terms of the impacts of the United States policies uh, on terms of land grabbing, in terms of policies affecting our agriculture. And we, and we think that this is a very important action for Puerto Rico also to, to be self-sustained in terms of, of food production. Some of the, the, the ways that we're going to collaborate with unions here in Puerto Rico is that they've asked us to be on radio shows from the United States that they want to spread the message on what happens after disasters, what has happened in the United States after disasters. So the union brothers and sisters have asked us to be part of that process. Because we know one thing is certain, that hurricanes and climate disasters are only going to be intensified and accelerated due to all of the conditions of the fossil fuel industry. And so we need both a unified and a powerful people-centered uh, recovery approach. And agroecology is a key component to the work of food sovereignty, which is one of the main um, aspects or elements of a just transition. A lot of organizations, a lot of green groups especially, are very focused on trying to stop climate change. Greenpeace has campaigned on that for decades, you know, we're trying to stop extraction, we're trying to stop the burning of fossil fuels, and it seems that we're at a turning point, and um, we're, gonna, we're now seeing and experiencing more and more regularly the impacts of climate change. And our grassroots allies have been the ones on the forefront of that, of, of feeling the impacts of climate change. And they're now leading the vision to get to move through that and to move out of that. Those brothers and sisters from Local 675 will be back here on the island. And one of the things that they told their brothers and sister union members here is that in any way that they can help, the union movement in the United States can help, the union movement here in Puerto Rico, that they can count on them. That to us has made a lot of sense because ultimately what happens here to union members in Puerto Rico happens to union members everywhere. So ultimately we want this to have a good way of working relationships in a way that we come here in solidarity, not charity. <laughs>